Hi, this is the first part to the course on consuming a REST API in Flutter. In this video, we're going to build all the pages and all the pop-ups we need for our application. Those pages and pop-ups include listing notes, creating and updating notes, and also a confirmation dialog for deleting notes. So as you can see, I have an empty Flutter application here. And the first thing I'm going to do is create a new folder in this project and call it Views. In this folder, we will store all of our pages and views. The first view we're going to create is note list. All right, now this is an empty file, and I will use the stateless snippet from my Flutter extension in order to generate a stateless widget. We'll call it note list, and just press tab a couple of times. Now we need to import the material library. And what I want to build here is a page that has an app bar that says list of notes and also build a floating action button that's going to allow us to create new notes. And after that, of course, we're going to build a list view which is going to display all the notes that we have. Okay, so now we have a pretty bare bones page. We have a page that has an app bar, a floating action button, and an empty body. Now we should use this note list widget as our home. Now I'm going to copy the name of this class, go to main.dart, and set the home page to be note list. And also I'm going to remove this redundant home page. And what I actually did wrong is I created this views folder outside of the lib folder. You probably noticed it, but for some reason I haven't. So I'm just going to move this views folder up here. Okay, and now we can import the note list view. Now I'm going to restart the application and I'm going to go to my emulator. Alright, so we got pretty much what we expected. We got an app bar that says this list of notes and we also have a floating action button. Now let's go back to our note list. And in here I want to replace this container with a separated list view. In here we need to provide a separator builder. This is a widget that's going to be shown between every single list item we have. Fortunately, Flutter provides a divider which will do the job. The next thing we need to provide is the item builder. Here we have the context and the current index of the item. And in here, I will return a list style. The list style is going to have a title, that's going to be a text widget, and it's just going to say, hello. I'm also going to add some styling in order to change the color of this text widget. I'm just going to set this to be primary color, so if we decide to change the primary color later on, our text color will change as well. The subtitle is also going to be a text widget. It's going to say when the note was last edited. I'm going to say that it was edited on the 21st February of 2021. And also one very crucial thing we need to provide is the item count. Let's just say it's 30. And now when we save this and go to the emulator, we get pretty much what we expected, a list of notes. We can scroll through them, go down, go up, whatever. Okay, this is all good, but this data is heavily hard-coded. What if we want to have different elements displayed? Well, we're not going to call the REST API yet, but I'm going to hard-code some quote-unquote dynamic data. That dynamic data is just going to be a hard-coded list. And here, so we would have type safety, I'm not going to use maps or that kind of stuff. I'm actually going to create a new folder that's called models. And in the models folder, I'm going to create a class that's called notes, note for listing. And now I'm going to create a class called note for listing. In there, I will provide a note ID, which is going to be a string. I'm going to provide a note title and also date and time of creation. And also I'm going to provide the date and time of when the note was last edited. And now I'm going to create a constructor which is going to take all of these elements in. Let me just remove these semicolons and remove this. Now I'm going to wrap all of these in brackets so all of these parameters would not be required. And also I'm going to put this dot over here so the properties are set automatically. This should be sufficient enough. Now I'm going to pass some data that I created previously. Now I'm going to paste in some data that I just hard-coded previously. 
Okay, now we need to import the node for list model. It seems I made a typo. This should be latest edit date and time, and over here it's last edit date time. Okay, now we're not getting any more errors. Now we can actually consume this list and have some quote unquote dynamic data. So, first we'll set that the item count is not 30, but that it is as long as the notes list over here. So, we're going to say notes.length. And now the title is not going to be hello, but the note at that exact index, actually notes at index, dot note title. Also, the last edited date and time is not going to be fully hard coded, but it's going to be like this. And it's going to say latest edit date time. Now let me save this and go over here. And now we have some dynamic data. But you may notice that this looks kind of ugly. I'm just going to paste in a helper function I created for formatting date and time that's going to display it in a format of day, month, and year. So here I'm going to say format date time and pass in this date time. Now I'm going to save this and we'll go to our app. This looks a lot more readable. Alright, so what you might notice here is that we have a floating action button, but it's not currently doing anything. This floating action button should take us to a create note page, but since we do not have that yet, let's create that next. Let's first create the note create page. I'm actually going to call it note modify, because we're going to use the same page for creating and updating notes. I'm going to use the stateless snippet and call this note modify. Alright, same as again, I had to import the material package and now I'll just build out a quick scaffold. Alright, so this note modify page is pretty much empty. The only thing we have is an app bar and an empty container. But now we can actually go to that page since it exists. I'm going to go back to the note list page and I'm going to use the navigator to navigate to the note modify page. I'm going to use a material page route here, put in a builder and just return an instance of a note modify widget. Okay, now when I save the app and go back, I'm going to click on the add button and it took us to our create note page. So now we can actually draw out this page and see the changes live. Okay, so what does our note modify page need? Well, we're going to have our elements laid out vertically, so it needs a column, and we need two text fields. The first text field is going to be for the title of the note, and the second one is going to be for the content itself. So now I'm going to add an input decoration that we have a hint text of note title. And I'm going to copy this down here, but I'm just going to say note content. And now when I save this, and go to the emulator, you can see that we have exactly that. But this looks kind of ugly. The first thing we should add is some padding. I'm going to set the padding to 12, and this looks a lot better. And also I want some space between the text fields. I'm going to add a container which will have a height of 8. And I'm going to save the app, and now this looks a little bit better in my opinion. The last thing we need is a button that's going to serve as a submit button. So we're going to use the raised button, give it a child of text, and say submit. And over here, we're also going to set that the color of the button is the primary color. And now I'm going to implement the onPress method. This method for now is just going to take us to the previous page. Okay, let me save this and go back to the app. And there are a couple of things we should fix. We should make the submit text white and also make this raise button stretch as far as it can. Okay, so let's style the text. Set the text style to be color, colors.white. Okay, let me save this. That looks better. Now I'm going to wrap this button in a sized box. We're going to set the width to double dot infinity, so it would take up all the space it can. And it worked. Let's also set the height to 35. Alright, and now I'm going to put a container that's going to have height of 16. Alright, now that this is evenly spaced out, let's click on the submit button, and it does exactly what we said it would do. It returns us back to the previous page. So we said that this note modify widget is going to be used for updating notes too. 
I want the modify page to be opened when I click on a certain note. So let's implement that. Let's go to the note list. And here we have a list tile. And the list tile has a pretty useful method called on tap. So now we can just copy over this code for pushing the note modify page. Alright, now let's save the app. And when I click on a certain list tile, it definitely opens the note modify page. But up here it says create note and that's not good because when we are modifying a note we don't want it to say create note. Alright, so let's think about how to solve this. I think that the best solution is that the note modify page should take in a note ID. And if the note ID is null, that means that we're creating a new node. But if note ID is not null, then in the future we will know that we have to fetch the node from the API and that we need to say update node instead of create node. I hope that what I'm saying here makes sense. So let me go to the node modify widget, create an empty constructor and fill it in with this dot note ID and make this a non-required parameter because it can be null. And now let's set the string over here to be note ID. And this needs to be final because for now this is a stateless widget. Now let me save this. Now we can implement some logic. We can say here in the app bar, if note ID is equal to null, then we're creating a note. But if it's not, then it, we're editing a note. So now let's test out if this works. When I click on the add button, we pass in nothing. And when we click on the certain note, it still does nothing, but that's because we're not passing in a note ID in our note modify constructor down here. So let's just say notes at index dot note ID. Now here we're getting an error because we also need to specify the name of the parameter because it's not a required parameter. Now let me save this. And when we click on add new note, it has a create note title on it. When we click on a certain note, it says edit note. So we kind of successfully did the job of determining if we're creating or outdating a note. And to make this even more readable, we can create a boolean getter. That's going to say bool get is editing. And if note id is not equal to null, then that means that we're editing. So we can say if we're editing, then it's going to be create note, and if we're not editing, then it's going to be create note. This is going to be useful later on when we are actually submitting a note. We will say something along the lines if is editing, then update note in API, and else is going to be create note in API. You will see that later on. Okay, so we have implemented views for listing notes, for creating notes and updating them. So what's left? What's left is deleting. So the way I want to implement deleting in this application is to have this list style swipe to the right. And when we swipe to the right, I want a pop-up to say, are you sure you want to delete this note? And if we click yes, then we delete it. And if we click no, then we don't. All right, so this functionality is actually very, very easy to implement using the dismissible widget. So the first thing I'll do is wrap this list tile inside the dismissible widget. Okay, and now there are some parameters we need to provide. The first is a key, and this needs to be a unique value key. So we're going to create an instance of a value key, and we need to pass in some kind of a unique parameter over here. And we're just going to pass in the note ID because that's always going to be unique for every note. The next thing we should provide is direction. For us, the dismiss direction is going to be from start to end which means from left to right. And there are also a couple of methods that we need to implement. The first one is on dismissed, and here we are putting in the direction as a parameter, and we're going to leave this empty for now. But we have also a confirm dismiss function, which basically triggers when the user tries to dismiss, and then we need to ask them for confirmation, and if they say yes, then we execute the on dismissed method. So here we also pass direction as a parameter and make this an empty function. So now a view we have to create is a delete note view. So let's create a note delete file and make it a stateless widget, note delete. 
And since we want this to be a pop-up widget, we're not going to have a scaffold, but we're going to have an alert dialog. It's going to provide us all the styling we need for a pop-up widget. The title is going to say, I don't know, warning. Then we're going to have content that will say, are you sure you want to delete this note? And then we will add two actions, yes and no. These are going to be flat buttons. They seem pretty standard for this kind of pop-ups. So in the onPress method we're just going to pop the navigation stack. And now I'm going to copy over this flat button because the implementation is very similar. And it's just going to say no. And in here we're going to return a result that's going to say false, which means no, I don't want to delete this note. And now I'm going to use the show dialog method. And I'm going to use the show dialog method in order to display the dialog we just created. We're going to pass in the context, which is the current build context. And we need to pass in a builder function, which takes in a context and returns our note delete pop-up. We should import this and have it like this. But now we need to return true or false based on what is returned over here. So we need to collect the result and just return that result. But since show dialog is a future, this will not give us a boolean value, but rather it will give us a future. So we need to await this. But we cannot use await in a non-async function, so let's make this an async function. Okay, so now I'm going to save the application. Right, so let's see how this works. I'm going to just print the result so we can see what's happening. So we can go over here, swipe to the right, and we'll click no. It's going to return false. And we'll click yes, we're getting no. But actually I made a mistake. I want our navigator to return true over here, so we know that we can dismiss the whole note. So let's go back again, clear this, swipe to the right, when we click no we get false, when we click yes we get true, which really dismisses our note. Later on we'll implement the behavior to also delete it from the API. Right, but now I don't want to have nothing here in the background as I'm swiping. I want to let the user know that we're actually deleting a note when we swipe all the way to the right. So I'm going to put a background it's actually going to be a red container and here I'm going to put some left padding and also I'm going to put in a delete icon which is aligned to the left alright now when I save this alright so something has happened over here I'm just going to restart the whole application alright we have our notes again and when we swipe we have this nice container that is going to notify the user that this actually means that we're deleting a note Okay, and that's pretty much it for the first lesson. In the next lesson, we're going to add a service, which is going to serve as our kind of data source for our views. And also we can see how we can consume those services using the get it package.